Remember the Battle Hawks? Of course you do. A short but enthusiastic run. The XFL came to St. Louis. Nobody knew what to expect, and it took off. It was such a big hit down at the Dome, and the next game that was going to happen, the L.A. team was coming to town. They were going to open up the Upper Bowl. We are going to have maybe 40,000, 50,000 people there. It's a, uh, it's a sad story because it was a big hit. We kind of even joked about it. Hey, what if pro football comes to St. Louis? And St. Louis does great, but the league doesn't. And that's what happened. The XFL runs into, well, to be fair, it's because of the coronavirus and the league shuts down and then they say they're going away for good. It was a sad ending to a fun run. And uh, we love some of these players. There are a lot of characters. Even got the quarterback, Jordan Tamu, who's in the uh, camp with the Kansas City Chiefs. And the kicker, Taylor Russolino, who drilled still an XFL record of 58 yard field goal. And uh, this week, Taylor Russolino did something real cool. Got a GoFundMe page going. His fiance is a nurse, and he saw the frontline healthcare workers helping people during this pandemic. And he wanted to do something about it. So, got the GoFundMe page going, raised some money, and then was able to uh, provide some meals this week. At DePaul Hospital, Emo's, Sugar Fire Smokehouse, providing the uh, food and the money he raised. Also able to do the similar uh, a similar approach in New Orleans, his hometown, and in California, where he and his fiance are living right now and where she's working at UC Irvine. And I thought it was a good time to catch up with him, why this endeavor, but also looking back at that period when the XFL in St. Louis was a smash hit. The Kill Coin Conversation is presented each week by Triad Bank, the neighborhood-friendly bank located in Frontenac. They're on Clayton Road. They're just west of Lindbergh, right by the exit there, Highway 40, and on the web, triadbanking.com. They make it easy. They're St. Louis-based, so you know everything being decided is right here. Small business owners, you want to get things done, you don't want to go to New York or L.A., check out Triad Bank. Jim Regna and the team all about helping their clients. They did it through the pandemic. They continue to do it to this day. Also, Marie de Villa Senior Living, located at the corner of Clayton and Wideman Road since 1960. The spot to live your retirement years. Senior Living, you can take a virtual tour online, read all about it. Just really a festive place. Even in these dark times, they've made it fun. They'll bring in music, maybe put it on the back of a pickup truck and celebrate somebody's birthday with the music playing. Marie de Villa, senior living right there at the corner of Clayton and Weidman Road. Well, Taylor, just start with uh, what you're able to do, kind of raise a little money and get the food to the, the healthcare care worker. Just give me an idea, like how this all came about. Um, you know, so I was, I was, you know, back in California um, about late March, early April. And, uh, my fiance is a travel nurse out here, so she has been working at UC Irvine and OC Memorial um, throughout the past three or four months. And you know, she came home from work one day. She she continuously told me how people were, you know, every, every day they'd walk into work, they'd have catered meals, they'd have, um, you know, somebody giving supplies, um, anything that could that could aid the the medical staff, you know, for that shift. So, you know, I was kind of sitting here one afternoon and I was like, you know, I wonder if I could, you know, potentially raise some money and it'd be such a cool idea for me to be able to donate to some potential hospitals. And, and then in doing so, you know, I put together a, a GoFundMe page, um, was able to raise around um, $2,000 and was able to allocate that to three different hospitals that, that kind of have a piece in my heart, um, you know, everywhere from St. Louis to a hospital down in New Orleans and then to the hospital here at UC Irvine where my fiance is a, um, is a nurse at. So, so that was kind of how it came to fruition. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been awesome too, because I've been able to help out a couple small businesses who I have affiliates with. Um, so it's been awesome. You know, it was, it was a great thing and, you know, I didn't know where it was going to go or what it was going to come about it, but ended up working out. And so pretty cool to see it, uh, to see it, you know, come to this and, and, and to provide anything to, you know, to assist in their day at, as they take care of this pandemic, you know, on the front line. And pretty cool that there's a St. Louis bond for you. I mean, it, you weren't here that long, but I get the sense for you, a lot of your teammates, and we can dig into kind of what all played out here with the Battle Hawks, but it's kind of cool how you've got a connection here that you maybe three, four months ago or six months ago, man, never thought would happen. 
yeah, I mean, it is. St. Louis will will forever, forever have a piece, you know, in my heart and, and some of the best memories of my life. Um, you know, obviously it came to a halt sooner than we all had, had wished for, but, but, but it was an incredible, incredible, you know, three months in that, in that city. And, you know, the way the fans treated us, um, you know, the way the, the people engaged in, in the team, the support um, that the organization had, it was, it was an all around positive, great experience. Um, and, you know, and, and who knows what the future holds, but, you know, we would love to see the battle Hawks right back there in St. Louis and, and, you know, get that dome back rocking. What did you think was going to happen when you signed with the XFL? And I've talked to Kurt Hunziker and they had some ideas and some hopes and then everything sort of just blasted way past their expectations. What about as players? I mean, just as you said, I mean, expectations were exceeded on, on every level from, you know, from pulling up to that first game, which is something, you know, I'll never forget seeing the fans, you know, the tailgate um, exiting the interstate right there was, was remarkable. Um, everything from that to, you know, the, the operations to the organization to the, like I said, you know, the support that they were getting on a weekly basis, going out in the community and, and, and selling tickets and, and building that fan base and, and, and how quick it, it is, you know, how quick it established itself as, as the top team in, in the XFL, you know, especially from a fan base perspective. So, so, I mean, it, it certainly, it, it certainly took a lot of us off guard, but it was, we weren't surprised either. It was, you know, we knew St. Louis was hungry for football. We knew they deserved it. And, you know, we were excited to bring that to them. And, and it was awesome. Every, every step of the way was, was incredible to be a part of. How abrupt was the ending? And I know the whole world has been in chaos and there's bigger issues than even football. We know that. But for you guys, because of the buzz it created and the fun everyone was happen, happening, how, how abrupt and just jarring, disappointing was that moment when they said, not only our season's gone and now the league's gone, give, give us your emotions as that all played out. It, it was, I mean, you know, because like you said, you know, it was a pretty abrupt, you know, it all happened within a 24 hour to 48 hour period. You know, we saw, you know, the first was the NBA to go down as far as canceling the season or postponing it to say, um, you know, once that happened, we kind of knew it was just a matter of time. Uh, we had one more practice after hearing the NBA had canceled still with hopes of traveling to Tampa Bay that weekend. Um, so we were crossing our fingers, but you know, every few hours we would hear something new in regards to postpone, you know, March madness was canceled and all that. So it, it was essentially inevitable at that moment. And it, it was crazy because, you know, we were riding that, you know, we were riding that high horse as a team, as an organization, we were looking forward to the, to the next game. And, and especially two weeks from that, when we had, the Los Angeles Wildcats coming into town with, you know, approaching 50,000 tickets sold. And that, you know, that dome was going to be, you know, loud and, you know, opening up that top, um, top section was going to be incredible. So, so, you know, it all, it all happened quickly. And, you know, within a matter of time, we were all back in our hometown, just wondering, you know, well, what's next is the league is, are we going to be back in two weeks? Is it completely done? Is it, you know, and then obviously, you know, a few, well, maybe a month or so later, you know, we saw the news of the XFL completely folding with, you know, the whole bankruptcy thing. And, and at that point it was, you know, it's all out of our control. So, um, you know, we're just sitting here, you know, we were taking in the news, kind of seeing what was going to happen, seeing the potential future and then kind of preparing what's for, you know, for what was next in, in each of our individual journeys. So, you know, it happened quickly, but, you know, just as, like you said, this whole thing is, has caught a lot of people off guard and, you know, most important thing is you just just how you adapt and you know the adversity that we're all facing it's you know and I believe in the long run it's going to make us all better and it'll provide some opportunities that could that could be incredible for all of us yeah, in battle hawks lore there's the 58 yard field goal you kicked that's one of the signature moments of what was an abbreviated season what is next for you I would think the NFL I mean at some point you got to get into a camp I know Marquette King your punter who played at the NFL level with the Raiders has tweeted support for you how do, how do you knock down that door and, and get a sniff at the next level? Man, it's been tough, you know, since, you know, since the, uh, since we were sent home, you know, I've had teams reach out. Um, my agent and I have been in contact with a few teams. I've had, I've had potential signing opportunities, but nothing has really come to, you know, the forefront as far as, you know, a team taking that step and saying, Hey, you know, we're going to sign this guy. Um, you know, but 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 I do believe that could happen, whether it's any day now or, or sometime soon, especially, you know, now that training camp is is beginning. 
you know, there's still a lot of unknowns and um, certainly, you know, still a lot of, you know, ups and downs as far as what's going to happen with the NFL. So, you know, for me, I mean, I've been training with, um, you know, some phenomenal coaches out here. I've been continuously getting in work with guys like Marquette and, and some other NFL guys. So just continuously staying ready and staying in shape. And, and I can tell you when, when that opportunity comes, I will be absolutely more than ready. And, and I do believe it's going to come. I believe hopefully here soon. And, you know, I, I believe God's got a plan for it. And whatever it is, you know, like I said, I'll be ready. So, so, so we'll see what happens next, man. I'm excited, though, for, for whatever the future has in store. That's for sure. The good thing about kickers is the older they get, the more valuable they are. I remember one year the Rams brought in a punter. I think Mike Horan was like 45 and selling real estate. And Mike Mart says, I don't give a damn how old he is. This guy can kick. Right. I, I, mean, I think age is not really a factor, is it, when you're a kicker? You know, it's not. And it's funny you say that. Um, you know, I, I, one of the coaches I work with out here is John Carney, who played in the NFL for, for 23 seasons, I believe. Um, had a phenomenal career. You know, in my opinion, one of the greatest, you know, to ever swing the leg. And, you know, just last week we had a conversation and he was telling me something that he continuously preaches to agents or scouts or, or personnel guys in the NFL is, look, you know, he was referencing himself and, and some other guys who had the opportunity to play into their early 40s or their late 30s. And he he was telling these guys, he's like, look, my prime was was 28 to, you know, 36 years old. It's like those were our best five to six years you know, having a few years as a young guy, you know, giving you the ability to learn, you know, the mental and physical aspect of, of the high demand of the NFL and, and then really, you know, getting that grasp on it. So, you know, like I said, around, around the age I'm at right now, he said, you know, that's when these guys are, are, are sharp mentally, physically, um, they can handle, you know, pressure, they can handle the, the elements and, and just uh, the competitiveness, whether it's a workout or in training camp. So, so, I, you know, I do not believe age is a factor at all right now. I'm personally, you know, hitting the ball better than I ever have. Um, and I'm continuously getting better. You know, I'm not seeing a decline by absolutely no means. Um, you know, I'm competing against some of the best guys in the world on a weekly basis. And, and I'm right up there with the best as far as, you know, as far as kicking goes. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I believe I have several, several quality years ahead of me, and, and I look forward to, you know, providing that service to, a, to an NFL club here soon. And you know you can do it. You've, you've done it. We talked about the 58-yarder. What do you think about that NFL moment would be like when you're drilling a game-winning camp? I mean, do you allow yourself to dream about it? Millsaps College made it to the pros. I mean, have you, have you thought about it, what it would be like? I, absolutely, man. I mean, I, I honestly probably think about it dream about it and envision it, you know, on a daily basis, because I mean, mentally, I consider myself there. I just, you know, at the moment, you know, I don't have a logo on my chest, or I don't have a certain organization that I'm signed to, but I do believe that I'm there. And, you know, it's just a matter of time, because yeah, I mean, mentally is, it, um, you know, it's been, you know, that's a huge part of it, especially as a kicker, you know, just just believing in yourself, just seeing that ball through the uprights, just just being in the moment and, you know, and trusting everything that you've done to get there. So, so I dream about it on a daily basis and, and I'm a firm believer of putting in the kind of, you know, putting in the atmosphere and kind of letting it play course and, and hopefully it comes to fruition here soon. And, you know, and I look forward to that moment, you know, becoming reality, you know, hopefully soon. So do you still have Battlehawks gear laying around the house, a sweatshirt here? I know some of the, equi some of the equipment, I actually asked Kurt Hunzinger. I had people emailing me at the TV station. They wanted a helmet, whatever. He said, sorry, that's all in bankruptcy court. But how about you got to have right. something laying around? Yeah, certainly do. You know, uh, you know the bag of footballs I, um, I bring to the field, I have two or three Battlehawks balls. Um, I have, you know, I have – you know, a few t-shirts um, for myself, some that I've given to family and friends. You know, I've got a couple ball caps. I've got a, you know, like I said, a few footballs and some shorts, you know, so I do have some memorabilia, some things that I'll cherish, and, you know, hold on to forever. And, you know, always look back of, you know, at that moment. And, and every time I do, I'll certainly put a smile on my face. That's for sure.